Hello folks, this is Dr. Vincent Price, Price Center for Approval. Um, this is yet another video, it's been a while, but I say since I have this time in quarantine with um, <clears throat> coronavirus going abroad and keeping people inside their homes, I think it's, it's a perfect time for me to actually create another video and just reflect on what I've, I've been working on. And so that's the purpose of this video. Um, it's not really instructing you to do anything. I'm not really teaching any grammar or writing. I'm just reflecting on something that I've been reading most recently. And so it's, uh, it's a Stephen King piece. Full disclosure, I've never read anything by Stephen King. But after starting my podcast, uh, The Right Grad, I noticed, I found a quote by him, and in that quote, he says to, he says, I believe that the road to hell is paved with adverbs. And so, uh, once I tracked down where he actually said that quote, I found that I was in, in this particular text, um, Stephen King, a memoir of the craft on writing. So, or on writing a memoir of the craft. And so I, I started reading it, and there's one thing that I noticed, and perhaps other Stephen King, well, other, perhaps Stephen King fans notice this. He his writing is so crisp. I mean, it's it's insane. He he gets rid of adverbs. His adver his adjectives are on point. His verbs are on point. The images that he creates. The, the voice that he creates with his words are so straightforward and so clear, so personable. I mean, that's some good stuff. I don't identify as a reader. But once I finish this, I think I'm going to start reading one of his um, horror books. Someone suggested Pet Cemetery, So I might, I might read that uh, and see how... Of course, the book compares to the movie or movies. I haven't seen that second one. I don't think I will see that second one because it just seems off. But um, but enough of that. So I've been reading this book and I decided to pull some quotes from it because it's, it's some good stuff. So in addition to that adverb quote that he says, he also says, um, so it's a memoir. So he's walking through his his um, stages as a writer. They starting when he was very young, uh, and this particular quote comes from from this description of when he was young. He says, <clears throat> uh, "So the context is that he was uh, reading some children's stories. Uh, they may have been. I don't think they were comic books. I'm confusing that with someone else." They, they may have been comic books. Who knows? Anyways, he says, I at some point, I began to write my own stories. Imitation preceded creation. So, in other words, he used those stories that he was reading. I think they were comic books. And then he would, every now and then, replace some of the, the lines with his own lines. And that... After reading that, that reminded me of something that I read in Sherman Alexie's um, essay, The Joy of Reading, Superman and Me, or it might be Superman and Me, The Joy of Reading. I always confuse the colons, uh, what goes on the left side, what goes on the right side. Either way, uh, in that particular piece, Sherman Alexie talks about how when he was younger, he was reading Superman comics. And at some point, fascinated with reading because of his father, he wanted to start writing. So he started, uh, even <laughs> when he was looking at the Superman comics, he really didn't know how to read, but he would pretend to read like little children do. Look at the pages, imagine what the words are saying, um, and then play it back in his head. Ooh, I'm breaking down the door. So he would start to imitate and start to craft his own writing uh, at the same time while he was reading. So that's that's very interesting. And so that also 
both of those those quotes or those uh, episodes from King and from Sherman and Lexi roll into what I said in the previous video about if you want to write more or write better, start to read more and start to imitate the things that you're seeing other people do. So if someone is uh, writing very crisp language, um, avoiding adverbs or using them very limitedly, <clears throat> or um, or even starting sentences in a very distinct way, start to take that and manipulate it until it becomes your own. Imitation, as King says, precedes creation. Okay? Imitation precedes creation. I mean, think about when, when with babies. When babies are born, they don't know automatically how to smile. They see other people smiling. And so they imitate that. And then after a while, that imitation becomes creation. Now they're able to control when they smile and why they smile and all this other stuff. So that's a, that's a quote that I really do like. Imitation precedes creation. Um, let's see. There's another one that he says. So <clears throat> a little bit uh, shortly after that, he writes his own um, version of a story that he's read. And he shares it with his mother. And his mother reads it. And she's taken aback by it. Oh, wow, this is great. Uh, did you write this on your own? And then he says, no, I basically, you know, copied some from the other text, but a little bit of his mind. And so his mother suggests that he, here's the quote, write one of your own. Okay. She was saying that this, this particular text that you're imitating, it, it's been done. You know, it's not of high quality. Write one of your own to trump those things. And so, you know, after you, once you start imitating, then once you have that, that, that writing pattern, that writing cadence, you know, under control, start putting in force, uh, putting it to your own writing. Write one of your own. And, and I'll be honest, I think that these videos on writing and on grammar and the podcasts that I have and um, some of the articles that I've written, they're all inching me towards writing something of my own. If you've watched any of those times where I have done any free writing, it's always been about the same thing. And I've been saying that evidently there's something that I need to write that I haven't written yet. So. I'm getting very close. I don't know what the next push or the final push is going to be, but I'm getting very close to writing something of my own that I think I need to express. My other, um, one of my podcast episodes talks about um, writing to express myself or writing to express yourself rather than to, rather than to impress others. And so I have to practice what I preach, you know, <clears throat> it's time to write something of my own so I can feel my words and hear what my words are trying to say to me. And so I don't know what that's going to be coming in the form of. Um, who knows? But I am I'm curious to see what that's about. So that was quote number two. Uh, there's a third quote. That's different from that episode of Imitating the Right. <clears throat> he says, King says, good story ideas seem to come quite literally from nowhere, sailing at you right out of the empty sky. Two previously unrelated ideas come together and make something new under the sun. Your job isn't to find these ideas, but to recognize them when they show up. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. This is, I am, 
I'm speechless, you know? It's, it's very interesting how when you're ready for it, you find inspiration when you need to find inspiration. So sometimes, you know, when I've been feeling this, this need to write something, to create something of my own, I've been trying to force it. I've been trying to find that idea. King says, Hmm. Sometimes it's not going to be you finding the idea. Instead, it's going to be you recognizing that this idea connects with this idea and they make some, some nice bond of something quality that can be expanded upon. Two previously unrelated ideas come together and make something new under the sun. Your job isn't to find these ideas, but to recognize them when they show up. Oh, you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of the scene from the movie The Five Heartbeats. You remember that scene? Uh, Donald Duck Matthews is in his bedroom trying to write a new song and so all over the the bedroom his crumbled up sheets of paper from what he uh, identifies as failed lyrics the room is you know littered with them meanwhile his younger sister is in the room doing her chores sweeping so every time he throws another piece of paper onto the floor she has to clean that up. Then she gets upset, irritated. She says, what's so hard about it? All you got to do is take this piece, picks up one of the sheets, uh, crumbled sheets, and looks at the lyrics, and then connect it with this piece, picks up another one, and then from there, movie magic, music magic, she stitches together a song, and he writes it all down. So that's, that's, King's quote in action, those previously unrelated ideas, those previously failed ideas, failed simply because you didn't have everything that connected to them yet, it seems. But then when you look back at those things, then you're able to see where they all fit in. This goes here, this goes here, this goes here, and then you have a whole piece. Oh! Oh, I'm excited. Okay, so that was quote number three. Okay. Um, and then the last quote is something I had to, you know, read a few times in order to understand it. He says, write with the door closed. Rewrite with the door open. So this quote um, is introduced in the text when... King has uh, secured a job at a, a newspaper and he submits uh, a piece, it's a sports piece, and his editor marks it up uh, and, and gives it back to him and King is astonished by this because I, evidently his English teachers have never written on his papers, marked them up, and told him how to strengthen his writing before. Uh, but it, this quote comes into play. So, write with the door closed, rewrite with the door open. So, that first part, write with the door closed. So, as you're writing that first draft, you're writing to express yourself. You're, you are your audience, right? If you're not pleased with what you're writing, there's no need to send it out uh, to anyone else. You first have to make sure that you like how it sounds. Okay? And then, the second part, rewrite with the door open. So, if your writing is meant to serve an outside audience, if it's not a journal, you know, a personal journal, dear diary, and all that stuff, then you have to listen to what the outside audience is saying. 
What kind of feedback are they saying? Uh, what type of feedback are they giving? So if something is unclear, how can you clarify it? So rewrite with the door open. Open up your door. Open up your writing uh, so that people can give you some critique, editorial critique. Not necessarily saying that uh, it stinks, but something more, a little bit more constructive. Now, it stinks has its place, you know. Sometimes you just have to be honest. But you can't just stop with it stinks. Why does it stink? So rewrite with the door open. For me, that is the the tough part. Because I, I spent so much time, you know, writing this the way I wanted to hear it, the way that I wanted to read it. It's a labor of love. It's my baby. And then I give it to someone. So oh, look at this child. Isn't this child the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? And the person says, I see that it's a baby. Um, there are some cute features to this child. But I would say that the eyebrows are a little bit off and um, the toes are a little bit scrunchy. What's, what's that about? Um, the hair could be combed a little bit. And so I take offense. Sometimes I take offense by that. But uh, so this particular quote, write with the door closed, rewrite with the door open, um, is going to be something I'm going to have to accept, you know? So that's where I am right now in Stephen King's uh, On Writing, A Memoir of the Craft. I hope to, I plan on finishing this. Uh, today is Wednesday. It's, I don't think it's a long book. So I hope to finish this by the end of the week. Uh, it's a pretty good read. And more than likely, I'm going to try to get one of Stephen King's uh, horrors uh, and, and see what that's like. By the way, if you're interested uh, in this time of, of quarantine and you want to read either this book or other texts, I've been taking advantage of the National Emergency Library on this, this website, National Emergency Library, the, the National Archive. You're able to download what you see here, uh, PDF editions of books. The first book that I downloaded was Dave Ramsey's The Total Money Makeover. I'm trying to get my money right. Um, and then this is the second and more than likely another King text is going to be my third. So this is all that I have to say for you. I'm just trying to share, just trying to reflect. Um, if you have read this book and you have any quotes, let me know. Leave a comment, leave a message, do whatever you have to do. It's a writing community. It's a reading community. I had fun with this. This is the most relaxed I have been. And so it, it's good. Um, so Vincent Price signing off. Um, keep a lookout for my podcast, The Right Grad. That's W-R-I-T-E grad. It's available on anchor.fm and Spotify. And I do also um, edit. If you're interested in any uh, academic document editing, dissertations, theses, uh, proposals, article manuscripts, book chapters, uh, what have you, let me know. Uh, and I'll more than likely give you a price that other people cannot beat. And so... Uh, email me at price stamp of approval at gmail.com. Okay, check this book out. It's a fantastic book. Have a nice day, y'all.